In this video, we'll look at how to make requests using the Stripe API Postman collection. We'll start with a general overview of the Stripe API, and then take that information and apply it to the Postman environment. If you've already watched this overview in another video and would like to skip ahead, check out the chapter markers in the video description below. The Stripe API is organized around standard RESTful conventions. It uses those standard HTTP requests and responses with predictable resource-oriented URLs. Request bodies are form encoded, and responses are JSON encoded. HTTP requests you make can send data to Stripe servers in one of three parts of the request. In the request body, this is where you pass parameters to create, update, and take specific actions on objects. So for instance, if you're creating a customer, the customer's email address might be something that you pass in the body of a post request. HTTP headers, which is where the configuration like API key and API version are sent, uh, you know, in our docs, we'll often refer to the arguments as request params. There's also query string params, most often used for filtering lists with get requests. All right, let's get started making some requests. For this example, I've already forked the collection into my own personal workspace, set my API key as an environment variable. If you haven't done these two steps already, check out our installation and authentication episodes. Let's get started by first creating a customer. We're going to open the collection. We'll navigate down to uh, the customers folder and we'll click on this post request here, create a customer. For this first request, we're not going to send any information, so we'll just click Send. And we can see in the response that we got a customer object back. It has a customer ID, and it also has some attributes that were set for us by default. For example, uh, the created timestamp has been set, as well as an invoice prefix. Now, if we wanted to fetch the single customer later on, we could take this ID and use it in a get call. So let's do that now. I'm going to copy this ID here. Then I'm going to come back to my collection and click on the get request, retrieve a customer. We can see in, this, uh, in the path for this request, this placeholder value colon customer. And we're going to replace that with our customer ID. We can also use, instead of a hard-coded ID, we could also use a Postman environment variable. And we'll look at an example of that in a moment. When we make a retrieve call like this, we're not passing anything in the request body. And in this specific case, we're not passing any request parameters either. So we've set the customer ID, and we'll go ahead and click Send. And in the response, we get our customer back. Now let's create another customer, but this time we'll pass some data in that call. We're going to use scalar values and set a name and an email address. So we'll go back to create a customer and we'll click on body. And when we open this up, you can see that there's a lot of suggested um, parameters we can send. And this is really nice that Postman supplies these to us. We're going to click on email and select that one. And we'll also uh, click on, we'll also select name. And click send. And here you can see the uh, returned customer. And if we scroll down, we can see the email has been set as well as uh, her name. Now, just a note that the response returned to us was in JSON. But when we made the request, we had to send the parameters we wanted to pass in form encoded data within the body of the post request. So I wanted to just point out that difference to you. Fortunately, within Postman, uh, Postman abstracts this away. So you don't really need to think about it too much. But it's something to keep in mind if you were going to make requests outside of Postman. Now let's take a look at um, enum values. And a good example of this would be the tax exempt parameter on the customer object. So let's continue to scroll down uh, through our parameters. And here it is. And we can see here that we can set this enum to one of three values. We can set it to none, exempt, or reverse. And if we look at the customer we just created a second ago, and um, we look at the tax-exempt attribute, we can see this is set to none here. So that's the default. 
let it set it to exempt in this call. So we're making another call to create a customer. And this time, this customer's uh, tax exempt uh, attribute is set to exempt. We could also create um, one more customer and set it to reverse. Again, we can see that applied here. Now, what would happen if we set this enum value to, uh, to something that wasn't, um, that wasn't valid? So let's try it here and we'll, we'll set it to invalid exemption. And when we attempt to make this call, we get an error. So this is an error with a 400 HTTP status code. And when we look at the body of the error, we can see this message that tells us exactly what parameter had an invalid value and what values we could send. Let's look at another error that might be returned. And that would be if we passed a parameter that, uh, that was invalid, the name was invalid. So let's pretend for a second we didn't see this email parameter up here. And we'll deselect that. We'll come down here and we'll add uh, email address. That's what we thought the parameter was named. And when we make this call, we get another error. Again, the same 400 HTTP status code. And this time we have a little bit of a different error message returned to us, telling us that, um, that we attempted this call with an unknown parameter the name email address. So the most common reason for getting this error would be if you had a spelling error when you were passing parameters. And fortunately, within Postman, you get all these suggestions for the parameters. So uh, that's unlikely to happen too much in this, uh, in this environment. Another reason you might receive uh, this error would be if you were on using an API version that had changed and that parameter was no longer valid. So if you're debugging uh, uh, this error at all, those are just a couple pointers of things to look for. So we've created several customers at this point. Let's go and update one of those customers now. So we'll go back to our collection and click on the update a customer call. And the same concepts apply here for the update call that do for the create call. We're going to supply a parameters in the body. We can go ahead and um, we'll update this customer's email address. And then just like we did with the retrieve call before, we need to supply the, um, the ID of the object we want to update. Now, ID, uh, IDs of objects within the Stripe API are all strings, and customers are usually prefixed with CUS. So we'll cut and paste. Uh, the customer ID that we used before. We'll make the call. And here we've updated the customer and we can see that their uh, email was updated. Let's, uh, let's just take a look here if we were um, going to use a variable instead of hard coding the ID. So we'll take that out. Um, actually, I'll put it back and we'll select set as a variable. We'll set this as our customer variable and uh, just change the email address. make another call, uh, we updated it, uh, the email, but this time we updated the customer using an environment variable. If you find yourself making a lot of calls on um, objects repeatedly or chaining requests together, setting these object IDs as environment variables can be really handy. All right, so let's make a list call to retrieve these customers that we've been creating. Back to our collection and we'll click on list all customers. And this is a get request. We'll click send, and we can see here in the response that we receive um, an array of customer objects. Now, list endpoints support uh, passing a few different parameters to manage the objects that are returned. This includes parameters like limit, um, starting after, ending before, those sorts of things check out our pagination episode to learn more about making list requests. So occasionally you may want to delete an object. So let's delete one of our customers now. Back to the collection and we'll click on delete a customer. And we need to tell the API what uh, customer 
we want to delete. So again, we'll set this, um, we'll replace this placeholder value with our customer environment variable. Click send and our customer was deleted. So we've covered now creating, updating, and uh, deleting, as well as retrieving a single object or a group of objects. Now the API also supports uh, custom methods on certain objects and endpoints, and these are also included in the Postman collection. So let's take a look at that now, and we'll do that by creating a payment intent and then confirming that intent. Go back down to the Payment Intents folder in the collection. We'll click on Create a Payment Intent. And when we go to the body with the, um, with the parameter suggestions, we can see that the first two have already been selected for us. And that's because these parameters are required for this call. And so we need to provide them. So let's set an amount of $10. We'll set the currency to USD. We'll make this call. So if we take a look at the response that was returned for this payment intent, we'll see that there's no charges yet associated for this payment intent, so we haven't been paid. And we can also see that the status here is requires payment method. So let's now make a call to confirm this payment intent and we'll pass the payment method at the same time. So we'll come back and click Confirm a Payment Intent. Here, oh, before I do that, I need to get, uh, get my payment intent ID. We're gonna copy that. I'll go back to Confirm a Payment, click on the body, and I'm going to set the payment method parameter to be one of our test cards. PM card visa. And then uh, just like we saw with some of the other um, requests, we need to replace this colon intent with the ID of the object. Click send. And here's our, uh, our payment intent's been returned to us. We now have a charge, so we've been paid for this. And when we scroll down, we can see the status is succeeded now. So this is the end of our first episode on making requests. Check out the second episode where we cover passing lists of data as parameters, nested parameters, as well as setting your own parameters on requests.